Okay, so hi everybody and welcome to this year's first New River Experience webinar. I'm Bill Lairter. I'm the Adventure Program Manager here at the Summit and we're also joined tonight by Joe Rotaris and he's our New River Experience Trek Director. Um, this presentation will be recorded and posted to our YouTube channel so you can share it with your troop as you prepare for your trip. Um, we'll have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar, and we'll also be answering some text questions throughout if we can get to those. Um, to ask a question, click chat at the bottom of the screen in the toolbar. And after you activate that chat function, just be sure you address your question to everybody so that the whole group can see it. So Garden Ground Outfitters, you can scan the QR code here to find custom crew gear, souvenirs, or you can even order some of the items on the packing list and pick them up when you get here to the summit. So tonight's agenda, um, we'll be covering your requirements for participation, go over a basic itinerary, uh, cover a little bit of arrival day stuff, as well as our shakedown. We're also going to go over equipment and the gear you'll need for the trek, including what we provide as the summit and what you need to bring. Um, we'll also touch on branding, our Scout Connections page, a little bit of physical preparation, and we'll end with that Q&A and some FAQs. So our requirements, um, we want to make sure you get that planning guide out to all the participants and their parents. Um, you will need your annual health record, uh, wilderness first aid CPR certifications, BSA swim test, and of course, youth protection training. So we'll go over all that stuff in a little bit more detail. So our program supplement is going to be the primary planning tool, um, and it's an excellent resource to get you ready for the trip. You can follow the link on this page. And this is a mobile friendly site, so you can just look at it on your phone if you need to. Um, you'll also find the summit program guide, which has general SBR info. Um, make sure once again, that everybody gets this so they can get all the packing lists and helpful links. So our health and medical records, every participant and advisor is required to have a medical evaluation by a licensed physician within 12 months of participation. Um, the required form and risk advisory can be found at the top link on this page. If you're concerned about meeting medical requirements like body mass index, recent surgeries, or chronic health conditions, you can follow the second link here to get into contact with our medical team. Um, for all vital medications, whether they need to be kept cold or not, it's recommended that you bring twice what you would need for the duration of the trek. So one batch is going to go with you out on the river and one batch is going to stay with the health lodge um, in case you lose it or just anything that might happen. Um, we will be able to accommodate med medications that require cold storage, but please let our medical team and myself know ahead of time so that we can prepare for that. Um, please let us know about medical conditions before the trek. Um, the more our staff know ahead of time, the better the outcome for everybody. So dietary restrictions, for any special dietary restrictions like food allergies or religious restrictions, please follow the link on this page and fill out the appropriate form for New River Experience as soon as you can. The earlier you do this, the more time our dining hall staff has to make those accommodations. Um, for allergies, please be sure to list whether it's airborne, contact, or ingestion. It's also important that you let our guides know when you arrive. Um, we ask that each participant with diet restrictions uh, introduce yourself to our culinary staff in the dining hall on arrival day just to make sure that you get taken care of and get what you need. First aid and CPR requirements. So the summit requires at least one participant, which can be an adult or youth, um, and each crew be certified in wilderness first aid or the equivalent and CPR from the American Heart Association, the American Red Cross, or the equivalent. Um, we recommend that each crew bring at least two people certified in wilderness first aid and CPR. That way, if your trained person can't make it on the trip, you are still covered. Um, you must present the certification cards or copies of current cards upon check-in. Um, we will also accept 
uh, these listed advanced levels of training and a copy of the current license or cert. Um, please share that with us during the registration process. So if you have a doctor or a nurse or even a ski patroller with outdoor emergency care, um, all that stuff will work. Just please get that to us ahead of time. So the BSA swim test, all participants are required to complete the BSA swimmers test prior to arrival. Um, bring this documentation with you. So you can follow the link on this page to find more information. Um, it's also a good idea to get that kayaking merit badge if possible before you arrive. It's not a requirement, but that's some good baseline knowledge to have. Um, you know, swimming is something that we get asked about a lot. Uh, it isn't meant to scare you, but to prepare you. So swims out of the kayak aren't that common, but you need to be ready for it. And we're going to go over how to self-rescue in the event of a swim once you get here. YPT, so units must have at least two registered youth protection trained adult leaders, 21 years of age or older. Um, if you feel like you're going to have a challenge meeting that requirement, please send an email to summit.program at scouting.org. And we ask that you keep YPT in mind when you're figuring out your tenting situation for the track to make sure we don't have too big of age gaps or anything like that. So your arrival day schedule, um, please plan to arrive between 11 and two. You'll check in, get a medical recheck, and then you'll head on over to the Paul R. Christian National High Adventure Base Trek Camp. So sometime between noon and four, depending on your arrival, You'll meet with your trek coordinator, you'll conduct your shakedown, and then we'll also hold our chaplain's aid and outdoor ethics guide meetings and check into your tents. Dinner will be from five to six in the dining hall. And then uh, depending on the arrival day, we'll have some evening programming available, but we'll go over that a little more in depth in the next webinar. So our itinerary on day two, um, you're going to hit the river and start kayaking. And so day two through five, you'll be in inflatable kayaks that we call duckies. And this will be on class one to three whitewater. On day six, we're going to swap out our duckies for a guided raft where you'll run class one to four rapids in the lower New River Gorge. So you're on the river all day, you're camping riverside at night. Um, after your last day of rafting, you're going to head back to the summit. You'll ride the Alexander's Eagle Flight Zip, and then day seven is departure day. So our shakedown, um, the way this works is you're going to be given two dry bags. One is a 110 liter bag and one is a five liter bag. And so these 110 liter bags are significantly larger than most backpacking bags, but that doesn't mean you need to bring the kitchen sink. So we still encourage you use compression sacks, try to keep everything nice and compact. You know, we've got to get 40 people's worth of gear out there. So don't go crazy on that. Um, we'll show you how to seal the dry bags up and you're going to pack everything in those big dry bags, except for what you need to sleep in that night and the river gear you'll be wearing on day one. Um, so we'll pack all that away in the morning. You'll pack up whatever you slept in, in the bags, and we'll hit the river. So the smaller five liter dry bags, those are yours to keep. And these will be for items you need during the day on the river. So that sunscreen, waterproof camera, water bottles, et cetera. Um, the 110 liter camp bags will not be accessible while you're on the water. So if you're going to need it during the day, don't put it in that camp bag. Okay, so equipment provided by the SBR. Um, we will issue equipment on arrival and then you check it back in at the end of the trek. Uh, please take care of this just like you would your personal equipment. So the next troop has it in the same condition. Um, we're going to issue dome tents, all of the seating, whether that be chairs, picnic tables, depending on the site, uh, dry bags, of course, all the PFDs, helmets, splash jackets, paddles, boats, uh, first aid kit, all of the food, all of the kitchen and cookware supplies, um, toilets and drinking water.
So you are responsible to bring the rest of the equipment and personal gear. Again, this all needs to fit in that 110 liter dry bag. You need a sleeping bag, preferably with a compression sack, a sleeping pad and a pillow if you want it. Um, we do not bring cots as they take up too much room. Um, you can also bring a pocket knife or a multi-tool, a headlamp and some extra batteries. Uh, you will need a simple mess kit. So a knife, fork, a spoon or spork and a cup and a bowl or a plate. Um, some people just bring Tupperware. That's a good budget option. We provide all the cooking equipment so you don't need the whole mess kit, like frying pans and all that stuff. Um, a quick dry towel and a bandana are good items to have along. And a handful of Ziploc bags are great for organizing things in your dry bag and uh, provide a little extra waterproof insurance in case you don't seal your dry bag up all the way. Um, you can also bring fishing equipment to use while you're at camp. Um, no fishing while you're out on the kayaks. Um, so a two-piece rod or a travel rod, something like that, you can pull out at camp in the evenings. Toiletries, so don't forget hand sanitizer, toothpaste, toothbrush, prescription meds, insect repellent, feminine products, camp towel, foot powder, chafing cream, moleskin, over-the-counter pain meds, wet wipes, sunscreen is a big one, and S SPF chapstick. So try to get that down to a size you can fit it all in a Ziploc bag. So clothing, um, basically you want two sets of river clothes and two sets of camp clothes. So when you work through the planning guide, you'll notice the clothing list focuses on layering, like base layer, mid layer, shell, et cetera. Um, this is basically to have you covered in case of inclement weather or an unusually cold trek. Um, in reality, most of the uh, treks in June and July, you're likely to be dealing with highs in the 70s to the 90s and sun protection is gonna be more of a factor than staying warm. Um, I like long sleeves and long pants on the river personally um, to protect myself from the sun, but whatever you choose, make sure it's quick drying synthetics. Um, Reno wool is another good option if it's lightweight. Um, and this goes for camp clothes as well, because if you get caught in an evening shower, that cotton is gonna stay dry the whole trip. So please try to avoid wearing cotton out there. A uh, set of rain gear and a light jacket or fleece will round out what you need. Rain gear over fleece is great in case we do have to get a like a cold, rainy trek. Um, bring a baseball cap or a wide brimmed hat that you can wear under your helmet. And then a pair of camp shoes with some dry socks is a great luxury on a river trip. Um, so I like to just bring an extra pair of sneakers along. Um, bring a trash bag to put those in so that you are not getting everything else in your dry bag sandy. So footwear, all participants are required to have closed toed shoes on the trip. Um, Crocs and flip flops are not appropriate whitewater footwear. I cannot tell you how many of those types of shoes I have seen lost on the river. Um, they're not gonna stay on your feet if you do take a swim. Um, you'll notice many of the guides prefer open-toed river sandals like Chacos or Tevas while they're on the water, but we do still require them to have closed-toed shoes um, attached to their boat and easily accessible. So the reason for that rule is in the evacu event of an evacuation, um, open-toed shoes are not going to provide enough protection in the really rough terrain that we can run into sometimes out there. So if you do want to wear Chacos, you know, that's fine, but you do need to have closed toed shoes with you as well. So some more river gear, we mentioned carabiners. Um, that's a question that comes up a lot. <clears throat> Excuse me, locking carabiners are required on the river. So we will not allow you to bring non-locking carabiners out on the water. Um, they are a safety hazard, so those can become attached to you or uh, equipment or equipment and you, and uh, at the very least cause you to lose your gear if they come open. So gotta be locking. I re recommend two of those, one for your water bottle and then one for your day use dry bag. Um, they don't have to be fancy, but just make sure they lock. I like the simple screw lock version. Um, your day use dry bag is a cool souvenir. You get to take that home. So sunscreen, maybe a couple snacks, waterproof camera, things like that. Um, if you have medication that you need to have with you, so think EpiPens or asthma inhalers, 
um, talk with your guides about that. We prefer to stir the or store those in dry boxes that are a little bit more secure um, that the guides can provide. And we highly recommend that everybody bring some sunglasses with a retaining strap to cut down on UV glare. Um, they don't have to be and probably shouldn't be expensive, but polarized uh, is going to help you out a lot and help you read the river a little bit better. Um, waterproof disposable camera is also a good option. PFDs. So the West Virginia Department of Natural Resources requires that we use Coast Guard approved type 5 PFDs. So it's got to have a pillow attached on the back of the jacket when used in a commercial setting. So for that reason, we are not going to allow any personal PFDs on the Bill, track. if you're talking, we can't hear you anymore. Let's see. Oh, we can hear you. I, I hear you fine. Can you hear me? Okay. I got you. Okay. Did you lose me on the last slide or this one? No, we can hear you here. We heard about the pillow type and you want okay. to. Yeah. Okay. So to get back into that, yep. Just um, sorry, but you cannot bring your own PFD. That is a West Virginia state law. Um, if you are into whitewater and you have your own kayak paddle or helmet, you can bring that, but please reach out to me first just to make sure it's going to work for what we're doing. Okay, so when deciding what to bring on the trip, please keep this in mind. If it's going to break your heart or your wallet to lose it, don't bring it on the river. So the young man in this photo is about to have an out-of-boat experience at Class 3 Surprise Rapid. So it doesn't happen to everybody, but it could happen to anybody. Um, I've seen wedding rings come off of people's fingers, necklaces go up over people's helmets. Uh, I've seen dry bags come open and put car keys and cell phones on the bottom of the river. So don't bring valuables with you. Um, if you do have valuables at the summit, lock them in your car. And then we actually collect everybody's car keys at base camp and lock those up before you hit the river. So please um, do not bring your keys out there. <coughs> Branding. So on night five of your trek, um, our staff will present you with a closing ceremony at our campsite that is unique to the River Trek participants. On this night, branding will be available if you desire. So you can bring appropriate items to brand from home or you can purchase things in the trading post before you hit the river. But once you're out there, you're not gonna be able to get anything. So we will provide branding irons, a heat source and supervision for branding. Physical preparation. So this trek involves 10 plus miles of paddling a day. So please don't expect a lazy river float. Um, if you have access to kayaks, try to get your crew in them as much as possible leading up to your trip. Canoes can also work for this. Um, if you don't have access to boats, just back, core, arms, and cardio. Um, if you get a strong headwind while you're out there on the new river, any bit of physical prep that you did will be greatly appreciated. Um, also, swimming is a great exercise, so we want you to be a confident swimmer when you go on this trek. Um, focus on paddling technique and learn as much as you can about whitewater. So here we have a classic example of um, what not to do in a rapid. So holding your paddle above your head in a rapid is the fastest way to end up in the drink. Scout connections. Um, if you have any extra spots in your crew, or maybe you know a scout that wants to attend, but their unit can't make it, <coughs> excuse me, Scout Connections is a, a great tool to let everybody come enjoy the summit. Um, super easy to post your availability. And there are quite a few active posts on there right now. So if you have any room and are willing to accept some provisional scouts, um, you can scan that QR code and find out more. Some FAQs. So probably the most common question that I get about the New River experience is, am I going to fall out of the boat? Um, the simple answer is we don't know. There are too many variables that go in to uh, give it a blanket answer. So your skill level, your fitness, balance, water level, et cetera. 
Um, that's part of what makes whitewater exciting and fun is it really comes down to the individual individual and you never really know what's going to happen. Um, what I will say is that most people don't come out of their boat unless they did it on purpose during a swimming break in between the rapids. Um, it's rarely somebody that's paddling aggressively using good technique that comes out of the raft. Um, also, keep in mind that even if you do swim, the odds are still in your favor. So anything above a class three, you're going to be in a boat with a very experienced guide. Um, of course, whitewater has inherent risks, but usually what happens is you climb back in your boat and you and your friends have a good story to laugh about around the campfire. Um, fishing, this one comes up a lot as well. Uh, New River is excellent smallmouth bass fishing. Um, there's also catfish, rock bass, walleye, striped bass, and even muskie if you're lucky. Um, so like I said, you won't be able to fish during the day, but you will be able to from camp. Um, anybody 15 or older is required to have a fishing license. So you got to take care of that before you get to the summit. You won't be able to buy a fishing license at the summit. <laughs> as far as equipment goes, don't bring your most expensive stuff. Um, it just in case it gets broken, moving from camp to camp. And you can always reach out to me if you want some more info on that. Um, cell phones. Part of the appeal of this experience is the opportunity to unplug and unwind from the constant screen time that we have. Um, I also understand you're going to want to take pictures, and that's totally fine. So just know that you know if you bring it out there, there is a chance it might not come back with you. Um, when I'm on the river, I do bring my phone in a Pelican dry box for backup uh, emergency communications um, if, in case something happens to the radio. But even with top of the line protective equipment, the river can be very rough on electronics. Um, another part of it is, you know, the guides simply aren't going to have room for a dozen cell phones in their dry box. So um, really recommend you don't bring it on the rafting day at the end of the trip. Um, so photos, there is a third party company called Whitewater Photography that takes really good photos. That's where most of the shots on this presentation came from. Um, so they take shots of some of the bigger rapids on the river. And then you can look at those when you get back to camp. They are free to look at and a little bit more to take home with you. And you can follow this link and kind of check out some of their work. more things to remember. So our next webinar will be held on April 16th at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, I realize this is different than what's listed in the planning guide, but we are subject to Zoom availability from the BSA National Office. So it's going to be at six o'clock. Um, this webinar will be for all track programs at the summit, and we're going to cover youth leadership roles, um, awards, service projects, arrival information, check-in information, and evening programming. So be on the lookout for an invitation from summit.program at scouting.org. Um, please make sure you have your CPR and first aid requirements met and schedule those classes if you need them. Uh, same goes for swim test. Fairs. Um, we really haven't had an issue with fairs on River Trek, but uh, please remind your scouts to keep a clean camp. So unfortunately, we've had some irresponsible visitors in the past leave food and trash in the camping areas at the summit main site, which led to bears becoming habituated to human food. So as the saying goes, a fed bear is a dead bear. Um, they're not a major concern, but we really want to keep it that way. So please remind everybody, don't bring any smellable items into your tents uh, back in truck camp. All right, that wraps up FAQs. One more shameless plug for Garden Ground Outfitters. So if you want to get custom crew shirts or anything like that, go ahead and follow that link. Okay, we'll go ahead and open the floor to questions. Let me look through here. Looks like Joe's getting on a lot of those. When will we be covering cooking at camp? So covering cooking at camp, um, we're not really going to go over that ahead of time. We have a pretty unique kitchen setup. Um, it is the exact same setup you'd 
be using if you were doing a month long trek down the Grand Canyon. So we're going to show everybody how to set that up and then crews will kind of rotate through as cook crews as you're here with um, our guide staff supervising. Um, here we have a question. We have an 18 year old on our track. Can he have his own tent? So that really is just going to depend on how much room is on the track and what the tent breakdown looks like. So we can't really guarantee people their own tent ahead of time. <clears throat> um, does completion of the river track make one eligible for the 50 miler patch? Yes, it does. Um, we don't necessarily um, hand that out per se, but we can help you with the paperwork on it as long as you take care of the rest on your end. But yes, the trek does meet the requirements. Do you allow GoPro type attachments on helmets? Um, yep, you can bring a GoPro um, attachment to put on the helmet. Um, one word of advice there is you definitely want to bring a couple of zip ties. I've seen a whole lot of GoPros go to the bottom of the new river. So bring a couple zip ties to kind of back up that GoPro mount because they will come off. Okay, well, we have a phone number to give out to people in case of emergency. So do you, do you mean in case you need to get a hold of somebody on the trek? This was from Thomas Nelson. So, um, Yes, the short answer is yes. Um, you can just call the summit, and if you need to get a hold of somebody, we can absolutely get in contact. Um, we have a question Is there connectivity at each campsite, or should we not plan on it? Um, that depends on your service provider. There's certainly no Wi Fi or anything like that, but some of the sites do have cell service. Um, ATT seems to get better service than Verizon or any of the other major carriers. link to review presentation recording later. Um, yep, that'll be up on our website once we get this posted to YouTube, but you can also, probably the easiest way is to just check out the Summit's YouTube page. Do we need to bring cooking gear? Um, nope, we supply that. Can we bring our own single backpacking tents for adults? Um, yeah, you can, I don't have a problem with that. You can bring your own single backpacking tent. Um, just note that in some campsites, there might not be a ton of room, but if you're you know, willing to get creative, we can probably make that work. So no cell phones on the river. Did that mean with us on the kayaks? Um, yeah, I'm, and I mean you, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of warning you that cell phones on the river um, can and do get lost. Um, you can leave them in your 110 liter bags. A lot of people do bring them in their day use dry bags, but we certainly can't guarantee that they're going to stay dry. Um, are we going to be with everyone on the river or just our crew? Um, so, yeah, you'll be in a group um, with up to uh, a total of 40 people plus guides. And then we have a guide to guest ratio mandated by the state of West Virginia. You'll have at least one guide for every 10 participants. But, yeah, we're moving down the river as a whole team. Are tents set up, torn down as we move from campsite to campsite, or they remain at each site? So tents are set up and torn down, though one of our sites uh, does have wall tents with cots. So to figure out tenting setup, uh, how big are summit tents? So we do have four person tents. Um, a lot of times we just put two people in them, but yes, they can sleep up to four. Heard there's a festival, so that will be in an opposite camp. Those folks are going to be over in Charlie and Delta, and Trek Camp is in Alpha. How much of the Whitewater Merit Badge do you cover? Um, and Joe, you can step in and correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, we basically can meet all the requirements for the Merit Badge, but 
we are not in in the trek road at least here we're not in the advancement business so if you want to complete the whitewater merit badge that's great we can provide the instruction but one of your adult leaders um would need to become a merit badge counselor and fulfill the rest of that paperwork uh including the service project <coughs> How are the sleeping bag? We'll go to the next tent. Um, so all of our gear is going to get packed up at the um, each morning and it'll be moved down. What is the drone policy at base camp and on the new river? Um, drone policy at base camp, I would recommend contacting summit.program at scouting.org. But on the new river, it is a national park and you not are not allowed to fly a drone um, within the new river gorge national park property. Okay. No, you do not need to bring your own troop first aid kit or white gas stove. Um, somebody that was asking earlier about uh, emergency contact number. So this is for the Summit Operations Center. And this is the best number to reach. Um, they can get a hold of anybody there who we're in contact with all day on the radios. So that is the number for the SOC. Um, a small dry box for my Nikon camera. Um, yeah, absolutely. You're you're welcome to bring it. You know, I I just um, want to caution people and know that you are taking a risk. But if if you're used to it, that's fine. I mean, I I do bring a dry box with me every day. Um, but I have lost things out of it. So just, just uh, know that you are taking that risk. Can we arrive a day early? You can, um, but there is a fee for early arrivals, basically to pay for camping and food. Um, so you would need to contact summit.program at scouting.org um, for any early arrival registration. Uh, that's a good question. If we brought a phone, is there any power to charge or would we have to bring power as well? Um, yes, so you would want to bring power as well. One of the campsites has one outlet or two, um, so I would not count on it. I would bring a power bank or a battery bank. Will you have coffee with breakfast? Yes, sir. I would not go out there camping without it. Um, the dry bags will be taken on a trailer from site to site. Camp chairs. Nope, we we provide the camp chairs. Uh, weight limit, no weight limit, um, but just so you can fit it in there. It's more of a volume limit than a weight limit. Portalettes at different sites. Yes, there are portable restrooms at each campsite. Um, there are not showers at any of the campsites um, except for your arrival day, basically back at the summit. So while you're on track, no showers. Okay, wetsuits. Um, no, we do have wetsuits. Um, we have not had to issue those in several years. It's, you know, the new river, as far as whitewater rivers go, um, is 
probably one of the warmest you're ever going to get in. So, you know, temperatures are going to be mid 70s all the way up to 80 degrees um, during trek season. So really rare that you would need a wetsuit. Um, but if we happen to have a cold snap, we would issue those. Uh, running water at the campsite? No, there's no running water, but we will have, um, you know, a water buffalo. So a couple hundred gallons of potable water that we um, refill every week. So we'll have all the water you need for uh, drinking water, dishes, cooking. Um, and then while we're out on the river, there will be a gear raft with you um, carrying lunch and they will have drinking water available. Biodegradable camp soap, um, yes, you can bring that for sure. Um, how bad are the mosquitoes is a subjective question. I don't really find them to be that bad at all. Um, a little bit of um, little bit of mosquito repellents, not a bad idea, but I mean, compared to somewhere like Northern Tier or the Everglades, uh, they are not bad. Uh, just be careful with that bug spray on the boats. It can damage the uh, plastic on the kayaks. Um, we need youth leadership roles, three roles. Yes, we will be going into that extensively in our next webinar. Um, filter for drinking water? No, nope. It is all filtered water. No need to bring a filter. All crews with the same departure day will be together in a common campsite. Yeah, they'll be together the whole time. Um, so we're going to be together on the river at camp while we're doing our side hikes. Um, it's all one one river trip. So yes. How much side hiking? Um, that is really dependent on water level. So if the water's a little bit higher, you're going to be able to cover ground on the river more and that'll afford more time for side hikes. Um, so really that, that kind of just depends on what mother nature gives us. Animals to be watching for. Um, snakes are the main one. Um, so we do have copperheads and timber rattlesnakes here. Um, the, you know, I've never had anybody on one of my trips get bit by one, but, uh, generally it happens if you step on them or try to pick them up. So if you leave them alone, they will leave you alone. Um, that being said, I would, um, you know, just be cautious walking around at night in camp, definitely have your headlamp on you. How many times? Um, we didn't have to do that at all last year to cancel kayaking and switch to rafting. Um, basically, our our um, cutoff level is 19,000 CFS. Um, if it gets above that, it's just hard to keep the kayaks kind of together as a group. Um, it's pretty rare. It happens a lot like in May and early June. Um, some years, but it's honestly, it hasn't been an issue the last several years, but that being said, you know, um, mother nature, you never really know what you're going to get. The biggest flood I've ever seen was, uh, June 26 of 2016. So it can happen, but not likely. Okay, any other questions, anybody? Um, so question from Chuck Wright. Sorry, I didn't see your question if that came through um, while I was presenting the slides about swim classification record. 
Um, you can send that directly to me in an email if you want, and I can get back to you. Just basically everybody does need to be classified as a swimmer. Restroom breaks on the river. Um, yep, that is as needed, on an as needed basis. Great webinar. Thanks for all the info. Really excited for this adventure. I am excited that you're excited. This is a great turnout. Um, this is certainly a growing program, so we're happy to see everybody on here tonight. Um, so it is actually April 16th is the group high adventure. And no, there are no more New River specific webinars. Um, we have uh, similar enough youth leadership roles and uh, the rest of the information is similar enough that we can cover all the tracks with one webinar. A uh, typical day on the river is um, wake up, cook breakfast, um, try to hit the river sometime around 10 o'clock. You're going to be paddling anywhere from four to five hours uh, and then you get to camp and kind of set up camp again, set up the kitchen. Um, cook dinner, a little bit of evening programming, uh, campfire, and do it all again the next day. So somebody asked if the um, slides or the links would be available. And yes, um, most of these links are in the um, are in the planning guide, but any of the other links that you might need, um, you can grab when this. Um, is posted to YouTube. What time do you depart from camp? So um, departure day, you know, that's up to you. You can depart um, as early as you want. So you'll, you'll get off the river, come back, ride the zip. Um, stay in camp that night, and then the next morning you're you're free to go whenever you need to. Anybody with a guitar, um, if you can, yeah, that would be great. You're you're welcome to bring a guitar. Um, but just you know, don't don't bring like a really nice old Martin or Gibson or something. Bring something you don't care if it gets sandy. Uh, what brand of shoes do you like the best? Um, I go back and forth between Chacos and Keens, but my my favorites the last couple of years have been Astral. Um, they have a shoe called the Rassler, which looks like a wrestling shoe, but it grips better on rock than anything I've ever used. Um, nope, our tents are made by Alps Mountaineering. They're, if anybody's ever been to Northern Tier, they're the, the same tents that they use. They're uh, kind of outfitter series. Uh, yes, the Q&A will be on the recording. Um, links to acceptable footwear. So, uh, you know, a lot of things are acceptable. Um, some people even just wear old, old tennis shoes, and that's fine. Um, probably the most popular are Keens. And let's see.
So there's a couple links. I mean, that's just what I like. Um, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna spend a lot of time on the river, that's a good investment. Um, don't feel like you need to go out and buy top of the line river shoes for this track, though. Um, just something that you know is gonna stay on your feet, is gonna protect your toes, and um, you can do a little bit of walking in is gonna work for you. Yep, you're right there. Cools are great. Um, really just anything that is going to dry quickly. You recommend a hat on the river? Yes, I do. Um, I pretty much always wear a ball cap and sunglasses under my helmet. All right, folks, any more questions? We're down. All right, thanks everybody. Um, if you have any more questions, shoot an email over to summit.program at scouting.org and um, we'll get you taken care of. Thanks for joining and look forward to seeing you out on the water. Have a good night.